Hello everyone. Today we will learn how to build this interactive data dashboard in Jupyter Notebook with IPy widgets and bouquet. It displays the Iris dataset, which has four features that you can see here. With these two drop-down menus, we can change which features are displayed on the X or the Y axis. So for example, we can do something like this, which changes the content of the Y axis. And we can do this for each of the features as we want to. Furthermore, each sample in the iris data set belongs to one of three species, which are shown here. And each of those species has a checkbox. If we toggle this checkbox, we can make uh, samples of a certain species visible or invisible. So let's get right into building it. We start out by loading the Iris dataset, which we get from the sklearn package, and then we convert it to a pandas data frame, which makes it just more convenient for us to handle the data. Next, we define our callback functions. Those callback functions are triggered whenever someone changes the values of the widgets. For example, the var dropdown function is triggered whenever someone changes the value of a drop-down menu. So when someone changes the value of a drop-down menu, we create a new figure which has the um, different values for the x-axis and the y-axis depending on what are the new values of the drop-down menu. This is how we make our drop-down menus change the contents of the x or the y-axis. However, we also need to check the values of our checkboxes to decide which species to display. Then we direct the figure to the output widget, which we'll talk about more later. Now for the species checkboxes, whenever someone changes the values of the checkbox, we want to change the visibility of certain data points. And this we achieve by selecting parts of the data depending on Q, which is the, um, the name of the checkbox, and we toggle the visibility of those uh, data points. The value X comes from the widget and tells us whether the widget was toggled to true or false, so checked or unchecked. And once we change the figure, we redirect it again to our output widget. Create figure itself is not a callback function, but more of a helper function. We can tell it what feature we want to display on the X axis, which feature we want to display on the Y axis. And we also pass it our iris data. And from that, it generates a new figure P. This create figure helper function we use whenever we need to regenerate the figure, which is the case after the drop-down menu has changed. Now that we have our functions in place, we can create the initial default figure here. Now we are ready to create our first widget, which is the output widget. This uh, widget itself doesn't do a whole lot, but it is simply a container where we can direct uh, output to. In this case, we want to direct the figure that we created to that output and we do that uh, using the width context. So in this case, during the width context, while it is activated, anything that we um, show here, where we invoke the show function, is directed to output figure. Now we are creating the species checkboxes. And we want to create one for each species, which we can uh, fetch by looking into the iris data set. Uh, for e so we, we want to look up each value in target names. And this will give us all three species. Then here we create widgets through the interactive function. There is a bit of magic going on here because interactive figures out what kind of widget to create based on the value it gets. First of all, though, here 
we pass it the callback function, which is the function that is triggered whenever so, uh, there is an interaction with the widget. The x value, by setting it to true, essentially IPy widgets decides by the fact that this is a Boolean value that it should create a checkbox widget. We also pass it Q, which is simply a fixed value of species. So this allows the widget to know which species label it belongs to. We also add a description, which is also the species label. And finally, we store um, our widget in this dictionary species checkboxes. Now we create both of our drop down menus and we create them through the same function interactive. But now when we pass, uh, when we pass to the X value, a list, which is this list of all of the different uh, features. So instead of passing the target names, we pass it a list of feature names, which are all the features that I showed below. Um, IPy widgets decides based on the fact that it received a list as input that it should create a drop down menu. And again, we pass it our callback function var drop down. Then we do the same for the drop down menu of our y axis feature. The only difference between the two drop down menus is effectively that they have a different description. So they tell the user that they interact differently with the uh, plot. And of course, the, f uh, the callback function via drop down checks the X drop down menu to decide what it should display on the X axis and the Y drop down menu to decide what it should display on the Y axis. Now, we create another widget that will house all the other widgets that we have already created, which is a V box, which stands for vertical box. This vertical box is our menu and it causes our widgets to be oriented in this uh, vertically rather than horizontally. So we have the X drop down first, then the Y drop down, and then the three uh, species checkboxes, which is exactly the order that we have down here. Now, another widget that is worth knowing about isn't really a widget at all, but it is something that uh, changes the style of a widget. It's called widgets.layout. And this gets uh, several different uh, attributes that decide the look of the widget. And we can use this to pass to other widgets. For example, when I create the um, highest level widget, which I just call app, which is a widget of type box, in this box, I um, store the menu, which we just created above, and the output figure. Finally, to actually display this whole thing, we call display on this highest level widget, which contains all our other widgets. And with that, we build our interactive data dashboard. I hope this was helpful to you and let me know in the comments if you have any questions.